My name is Lucas and I'm a third year video production student. I've been editing videos for about five years and in that time I've used almost exclusively Premiere Pro. I've edited YouTube videos, client commercials, narrative short films. So at this point I'm really comfortable in Premiere Pro. And for a while the only two really popular editing programs were Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. But recently I've seen a lot of people switching over and trying out a different program, DaVinci Resolve. It's a program created by the makers of Black Magic, and it's already been used on some really notable Hollywood films. But to me, DaVinci Resolve is a totally foreign program. I've barely ever even looked at it. I know that one thing it's really known for and good at is its color grading, but more recently it's rounded out and become an all-in-one video editing software. And until now, I've always stuck with Premiere Pro because that's what I've been comfortable with, but what's kind of convinced me to try it out is that for the full version of DaVinci Resolve, it's a $300 one-time payment. And if you wanna get the full Adobe Suite without the student plan, I think it's like $50 a month. So with graduating in about a year, I'm gonna need a software that I can edit on after I graduate. And for me, when that happens, it's gonna be a lot easier to make a one-time payment rather than paying $50 a month to continue editing videos. So today, I'm gonna to try out using DaVinci Resolve for the very first time without using any internet tutorials or anything. I'm just gonna open it up and see what I can figure out. For my last video, I made this little cinematic intro sequence to show off my desk setup, and it took me about two hours to make the whole thing in Premiere. And even though it's short, it uses a lot of different features that an editing program should be able to do. There's cutting, there's speed ramping, there's masking, there's color grading, all things that I would want my main editing software to be able to do. So I'm just gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna see how long it takes me to make the same sequence. Okay, I'm gonna set this up real quick and then I'll do it. Opening DaVinci. Looks like this is where I'm gonna put in my new clips. The bottom is a big timeline. Um, it looks like there's like a smaller timeline too. Maybe that's for like finer edits, like moving smaller distances. Um, and then on the top right, there's the viewing panel. I've got all the footage I used right here, so I'm just gonna drag in the whole folder. Okay, I can scrub through them up here. It actually plays really smooth. Okay, I guess I'll just start by dragging a clip in. Okay, I can drag it into both. Does it make a difference? Oh no, I don't have my key binds on here. Can I move the playhead? Whoa. It's kind of weird that the playhead just sits right in the middle. Okay, so it looks like I start going out here, so I'll just... Ooh. Okay, what does this actually look like again? Okay, so I start with the little zoom out there. Oh, I see, and then I have it zoom back in. Okay, it looks like this timeline that's on the top is a lot closer to what I'm used to with Premiere. Whereas like this one on the bottom, when I drag things, they like, it doesn't, oh my gosh, now it's moving. It just, it doesn't move like what I'm used to. I wish this clip was a little smoother. I wonder if they have like a warp stabilizer equivalent here, but I'll worry about that later. Then it cuts to this clip. This is the one that has the mask. Okay, it looks like this is like a preview window, so I can probably cut it down before I import it. I can't just put a gap there. They just stick to each other. Whoa, okay, so this, little button in the middle is kind of like the uh, the Y tool, whatever that is in Premiere. This is still very weird to me. Oh, there's this little thing that shows the playhead locked. I bet if I do this one, yes, this is more like what I'm used to. And I don't know why it says it's starting at, what is that, one hour, one day? I don't know why it starts at one instead of zero. Okay, what does that do? Video only, audio only, got it. Where is the audio track? Oh, it's in there, that we attached. <sighs> okay, and then that mask reveals this clip. Can I layer them? Oh, there we go. Okay, I don't know how to zoom in or out on the timeline here, but I guess I'm just gonna hope that I don't have to do that. What? Now it's just like Premiere. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Something like that. Come around there, it changes. I wonder if I can mark on the clip. I can't. What if I turned on the thing from this view? 
I wonder if I even can. Probably not. Ooh, I don't know what that does. This must be the cut tool. Maybe this is like a ripple edit tool. Can still go frame by frame. That's nice. Boom. Whip. That's where that clip ends. And then that goes to what? So in Premiere, I can usually set, use the I and O buttons. Yep, in and out. Okay, so in this view, can I? Yes, I can. Oh my gosh. It's like all the other software is all mixed into one. Command R is the one in, okay. It's similar, speed change, reverse segment. Okay, zooms out and then goes back in. Okay, that's a start. Definitely gonna have to speed ramp that. And that spins and does another whip, which goes to this shot over the, this shot. And actually in the original, I am going backwards over that LG logo, but I've reversed it because it fit better with the direction I had whipped in other clips. And I'll have to change the speed again, so Command R. So I slowed this down, goes past the LG there. Switching tools is annoying. Is there any hotkey to switch between those? There must be. Holy buckets. I don't know what this view is. So I think what they're going for here is like a workflow thing on this bottom row. So like this is like the import and this is where you line them up in sequence. Then this is where you edit the sequence. Then you do whatever this is. And then here's the color grading section. Here's the music or audio adjustments. And then export. This one makes sense to me. These other ones, I'm a little more worried about, but I'll deal with that later. Okay, so then we whip to the side there, and then, and then we go into this close up, and then the big final kind of reveal shot. So we got keyboard and final reveal. Okay, we got all the clips in there. <sighs> oh shoot, I haven't saved. This is the first time I'm saving. Um, 23, I don't know where it just saved that to. I cannot believe that this is all free. I don't know if I mentioned that before. This is the free version I'm working on right now. That is crazy. Effect controls. This is the inspector. It's the effect controls. I guess I can't keep my other window when I have the inspector open. Okay, I can get rid of this panel because I'm not gonna be importing anything else. I can even get rid of that media pool thing. So it seems like there's less customization for how I lay out these sections. These are views that I'm very used to. Can I move this though? Like if I wanted to move this to a different section, I don't think I could. Oh, I can't even change the size of this one. Okay, so now I have all the clips in sequence, but it's kind of boring, so I'm gonna add the music. Okay, so the audio comes in right here and it does a little fade in. So in Premiere, usually you can add keyframes right on the track here by doing command click, but it doesn't look like I can do that for this one. Okay, I see volume here and these look like keyframe buttons. So turn the volume way down. Oh, that's interesting. It actually shows how the waveform changes because of those keyframes. Oh, okay, I see. So this kind of re is reminiscent of After Effects, the way that double clicking opens like the original clip there. There's a built-in equalizer. <laughs> this really feels like I have everything all in one, which is just crazy. By the time that beat hits, we gotta be switching to that first shot. So now I gotta start adjusting speed. One thing that I wish in, in a lot of apps, really, if you hover over something like this icon, these icons, it would tell you what key command opens it, but this one doesn't. Like B opens the cut tool, but it doesn't say that anywhere. So I have this option on here, add speed point. And I think that might be what I'm looking for. Oh, that's cool. I can just drag this and it'll speed up that part. Oh, and then I can adjust on either side of it. That's so interesting. 
Whoa, and that changes where it is. Oh my gosh. So I can make this quite a bit faster. Stabilization. I can stabilize. I. This is blowing my mind. So now instead of doing all of that to the other clip, that's just a duplicate of this one. I will instead just delete this one, duplicate this one, alt drag, and then I'm gonna reverse it. Huh, it doesn't like me reversing it with those keyframes. It can't do that, but it can just reverse it. So I w I'm gonna have to do it again, I think. Okay, now I have to figure out how to add a mask. Mask starts up in this corner where the edge of the desk is, and then from the microphone, and as the microphone wipes across, that's the end of the mask. Okay, right now I am super happy with how this has turned out. Just the fact that I was able to do this much with a free app is crazy. The version I'm working on right now is not the full version of DaVinci Resolve. This is just the free version available to anyone. And I've been able to do just as much as I was able to do in Premiere. And some of the features I think I've liked more. And it was so intuitive. I thought I was gonna have a way harder time figuring out how to just do the most basic things. But any problems I had, I was able to figure out super quick just with my knowledge of general video editing controls. So it's in the final steps now. Now I'll just do some color grading and then I think it's done. I know the node-based editing is a big feature of DaVinci Resolve, but I just have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Okay, this might seem like a little feature, but watch this. You see, when I grab this temperature slider and I slide it and my mouse goes off the screen, boom, it pops back to the middle of the screen. Why doesn't everything do that? There are so many times in other editing softwares where I pull a slider and it goes off the screen and it just goes crazy and it messes everything up. Why can't they all just pop it back to the middle so I can keep sliding it. That's a way better way of doing it. Sick. Okay, I don't think that could have gone much better. I finished editing and rendering everything. Here's what it looks like. So there you have it. After spending about three hours in the program in total, that's the result I got. Going into it, I was a little afraid that I was gonna spend a lot of time just trying to figure out how to do basic things within the program, but just applying the knowledge I already knew from Premiere, I was able to figure it out actually really quickly. The sheer amount of options and like the things you could do with it amazed me. This is probably the most in-depth all-in-one video editing software I've ever seen. And this was the free version. This easily beats out all other free video editing software. And just from using it for one day, I can tell that it's among the best of the best for paid ones too. There were definitely some things that were different that I had to get used to, but with all the capabilities and features, I was amazed. I'm actually really glad I liked it because I want to make a transition to it and I was afraid that it wasn't going to be as good as Premiere and I'd have to kind of settle for less. But I didn't feel like that at all after using it. As far as weaknesses go, I think having everything all in one program does have its drawbacks. It's really nice for having one continuous workflow without having to switch between apps, but I just don't think it's gonna be able to have all of the features of 
you know, three to five different apps all in one. It has way more features than most video editing software, but it probably has less features than Premiere Pro, After Effects, Adobe Audition all combined. The node-based editing is something that's really interesting to me, and I think it has a lot of potential, but I'll have to look in more into how to work it because it was pretty confusing to me just doing it without any help. One other thing I missed from other Adobe softwares was the customizability of your work area. With any of the Adobe software, you can move panels around and adjust them however you want. In this one, it was less customizable in that way, which I kind of missed. And they also just, from what I saw, they didn't have as good a layout for showing your keyframes. In the Adobe software, it's really clear what a keyframe is for and what time it's at. Whereas in DaVinci, you don't get so many clear indicators. Overall, I think it's gonna take a lot of time to dig into all its different features and capabilities that I wasn't able to in the past three hours. But just from what I did today, I can tell this program has a ton of potential and I'm really excited to use it more. So as a Premiere editor, I give this a big thumbs up. One out of one would recommend DaVinci Resolve, especially as a free program. If there's anyone out there getting started in video editing, definitely get DaVinci. Okay, I think that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching, have a good day, bye.